Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today, we're discussing the star that refuses to nova, more studies on excessive solar storm impacts, a planetary culprit for a significant Earth cycle, and some little gems from the last day as well. We're starting with the last 24 hours on our star, and we find the last day was pretty quiet. No significant solar flares. Most of the plasma filaments remain stable as well. Solar wind and geomagnetic conditions here at Earth are finally calming down from the coronal hole stream. The lone eruptive activity was massive, but very slow moving. About an hour ago, the slumbering filament lifted up and away and away from our planet. Next coronal hole is coming in there from the left side. It was indeed the negative opening we identified a few days ago in the morning news. That'll face Earth directly in about two more days. Quick shout out to Kevin from Solar Ham. Kevin's one of the people who helped set the tone of public space weather reporting. When I was learning, I looked to legends as guardrails for several years. God bless you, Kevin. Space Weather Hall of Fame if I ever get around to building it. Up next, folks, the third in our AI papers is up, but this one is very short. More of a fun little jab at mainstream science. Basically, I had Grok lay out the problems with peer review, ChatGPT edited it, then I did, then Grok shortened it to be an easy three pages. Link below. Folks, in case you haven't heard, supernova hunters are staring at the sky desperately at night, waiting for signs of T-Core's new nova. It has a recurring nova event about 80 years in a cycle, but the most recent was due last year, and it's late, going to dominate the new cycle for a while when it happens, eventually. Up next, the April 2023 solar storm was one of the first after the major magnetic anomaly, the first to have the new range of outsized impacts from small space weather. In this case, the rare F3 layer creation in the ionosphere occurred and did so during an even rarer transequatorial crossing of the neutral wind flows excited at the polar region by the solar storm. Up next, let's rewatch part of the February 18th morning show from about two weeks ago. How about sister studies coming out four days apart this last week on the six-year cycle of geodynamic activity? Climate cycles fit, about a dozen of them. Geomagnetic secular variation and geomagnetic jerks fit. The rotation speed changes, the slight oscillations, and the actual length of a day, all tied to the same six-year period. And here, they are both saying these are indeed tied to the internal core magnetic dynamo of the planet, controlling how it all plays out in the weather and the rotation speed. Love the little reminders. Folks, it's magnetically driven, impacts the climate, earthquakes, volcanoes, and even the rotation speed of the Earth, and chances are it's actually excited by Jupiter. This is the level of resonance and harmonic science that needs to explode in the next several years. Remember, everything is vibrating. Folks were cranking into the editing portion of the documentary, even with one interview to go. AI in full swing. Editors ruining their eyes by the minute. Goldobservers.com is the reason for the season, and it's been able to hit a higher gear. They are observers. They're in the family, and they jumped at the chance to bring the magnetic pole shift information to the world. They want what we want, and I want you to recognize that gold and silver are in fact useful at every single stage of the disaster cycle, provided you're clever and intelligent. Catch up on metal goldobservers.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.